What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a tutorial video for you on how to make the hammer for Star Guardian Poppy from League of Legends. I absolutely love making big props and I'm excited to share my process with you today. So let's get started. The bulk of the hammer is made from a large sheet of insulation foam board which you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot. I wanted to reduce how much I had to cut my boards as much as possible because it's very tiring. So I went with one and a half inch thick foam board. I decided on making a hammer that was 22 inches long and 16 inches in diameter at its widest point. I chose to use insulation foam board because it's relatively cheap, easy to work with, and the finished product is fairly sturdy as long as you use basic common sense when handling it. The first step here is to cut your foam board down into more manageable squares. The squares I started with were about 16 by 16. If you have access to a jigsaw, I would recommend using that for both cutting the board down into squares as well as trimming them into circles, rather than hand cutting everything as it will save you time and a lot of muscle soreness. I measured out my first circle by finding the center of my square and pinning a tape measure at that point. You can then just rotate the foam piece around to mark the outline of the circle. I cut it out using my X-Acto knife and I then used this circle to trace onto my other squares, which again is another good time saving and common sense tip. Then all you have to do is repeat this process another 14 times and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Now we're going to create a PVC structure inside of the hammer to give it solid support. My inner structure consists of a T-shaped PVC connector piece along with two 6-inch pieces of PVC pipe. I traced around one end of my PVC T-connector to mark where to cut so that the connector fits snugly inside of the hammer. You want to make sure that the connector piece sits directly on the middle of your circle. You can easily determine the center if you use the first foam circle you cut where the center point was already drawn on. I carefully removed the foam using an X-Acto knife and a clay sculpting tool. Then I trimmed out the bottom part of the connector and made sure everything fit right. For the foam boards directly next to my centermost board, I used that centermost board that I just cut to create guidelines for cutting slots that the rest of the connector piece can rest in. Similarly, cut holes in the next few boards on either side for the two 6 inch PVC pipes to sit inside of. You can just keep using your previously cut boards as markers to find the center of the next boards you're about to cut. 
Again, I used my X-Acto knife and clay sculpting tool to do this. The number of boards you'll cut for this step will depend on the thickness of your insulation foam board. For my hammer, I cut three on each side. Next, I cut out a space for the handle to slip up inside of the hammer. You want the fit here to be as tight as possible to avoid any wobbling with the finished product. With my clay sculpting tool, I also dug out a little bit of the center of the boards where the inside PVC pipes end so that they can sit nested snugly inside and there won't be any gaps between the boards. Next up, I glued my structure inside of my boards and glued the boards together using Loctite PL300 foam board latex construction adhesive, which you can find at hardware stores. I used two big tubes, but probably should have purchased three as I ran pretty short in the end. Make sure you do this outside with a mask if you can, because the fumes are pretty strong. Start from the centerpiece and work your way outward evenly, applying glue to both sides of the boards. When you're finished gluing, set the boards up on one end and place something weighted on top to help push the boards together as they're drying. I let the boards dry overnight before moving on to the next step. Now for the hard work, sanding the shape you want from this cylinder stack. Uh, I use three different grains of sandpaper for this, starting with the coarsest of the three. You can also use an X-Acto knife to help with some of the spaces where it's extra uneven. I first focused on evening out every layer and then moved on to actually making the hourglass shape. As the sanding process went on, I switched to finer grit sandpaper. The process of sanding by hand took me about six hours total. Try to be careful with the sandpaper because it can definitely dry out and tear up the skin on your hands if you rub too vigorously. Once you're happy with the hourglass shape, move on to the edges of each end, creating a smooth curve. Again, I started with a heavier grit sandpaper here and finished with a finer grit.
With a completed base shape for the hammer, I then applied two layers of paper mache. Before applying paper mache, brush on some plain white school glue. Adding a bit of salt to your paper mache mix will help keep the prop from molding. Remember to let each paper mache layer dry before adding the next layer. You want to be extra careful with the curved edges on each end to make sure the newspaper lies flat. This might seem like a beginner technique, and it is, but I love paper mache. It's cheap and does a good job of sealing insulation foam. So I began losing a bit of footage here due to con crunch problems, but once the paper mache was completed and dry, I painted two layers of white acrylic as a primer. Then I painted on two layers of buttercup yellow paint from the brand Folk Art. Once that base color was down, I sketched out the shape of the foam details onto the hammer and traced over them with parchment paper so I could make a pattern for the detail work. I then cut that pattern out from my parchment paper and transferred the design onto one millimeter thick craft foam and cut out the foam shapes. I primed the pieces with a coat of white acrylic and then painted a dark blue and buttercup yellow for the detailing and finished with three coats of metallic gold on top of the yellow. I painted two coats of dark blue directly onto the hammer and then proceeded to layer three coats of metallic gold acrylic paint onto the yellow parts. Finally, it's starting to look a bit reminiscent of the hammer's actual design. This is when I started getting really excited to finish. I glued my foam details onto the hammer with a hot glue gun and so far it's stayed in place really well. As for the wings on either side of the hammer, I measured in comparison to the hammer and drew a pattern that I could scale up. I put that onto L200 foam that I got from CosplaySupplies.com and cut it out with my X-Acto knife. I took a Dremel to the edges to clean them up. Then to finish the wings, I used three coats of white acrylic paint and sealed it all with glossy Mod Podge. For the four stars that are all over the hammer and the one on the chest armor, I started with this 4th of July decoration I found in Joanne. I used Warbla's Transpa art, which is like a transparent Warbla, and shaped that carefully with a heat gun over the metal star mold. You really have to take your time here to get in every nook and cranny and really make the thermoplastic fit to the mold as tightly as possible. With a few coats of metallic gold paint on the back side of the stars and a little trimming around the edges, we're ready to move on to the backing and edging for the stars to sit in. Again, sorry for some missing footage here, but I used that same metal star mold to make two shapes from the L200 foam that the star would fit perfectly inside of. I used contact cement to put the two pieces together and then dremeled down the edges to get rid of any ugly or jagged spots. Then I hit the edges with my heat gun to get rid of any little fuzzies left over from dremeling. Yeah. Same painting process here, two coats of white acrylic, two coats of buttercup yellow, and three coats of metallic gold. Then I glued the stars in place with hot glue. For the end stars, I just directly glued them on using Loctite Super Glue Professional Liquid. I took a metallic gold marker that was slightly darker than my paint and traced the edges of the details that were painted directly onto the hammer to try to give a bit more contrast and ensure the lines were clean everywhere. <laughs> to attach the wings and the stars, I once again used my trusty Loctite Super Glue. 
It's more reliable than hot glue, in my opinion, and I actually made three years worth of cosplay before I ever actually bought my own hot glue gun anyway. Switching over to the handle, just a few quick notes on this one. I took my PVC pipe and marked out where each section was. I covered each section with foam, followed by fibra. I used my wood burning tool to etch in the grooves in the wrapped looking portion of the handle. I created this weird little foam connector piece that was flexible enough to slide up against the hammer without damaging it. From there it was just a few coats of paint and Mod Podge and the handle was done. I'm not as happy with the handle to be honest, maybe you can find a better way of doing it but I struggled with this one. More time and more patience could have yielded a much better result. So there you have it, that's how I made my Star Guardian Poppy Hammer. I tried to weigh it and it's about 10 pounds total, so it's not super heavy but it definitely still has the bulk that you'd expect from a giant hammer. Thank you for watching and leave a comment down below if this tutorial helped you or if you have any questions. Make sure you smash that motherfucking like button and subscribe for more cosplay content in the future.